Happy Saturday. <laughs> Good morning. Sunshine? <laughs> Maybe? It's gloomy and gray here, but it must be sunny somewhere. Maybe where you're at. <clears throat> I don't know. Let's give a few minutes for my crew to check in, if any of them are awake. <laughs> Have some coffee. Happy Saturday. Half marathon tomorrow, 13.1 miles. Who's doing it with me? Come on. Let me hear it. <laughs> Nobody? Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to download cricket sounds so I can play them after my dad jokes. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Mary Jo, where are you at? Meredith, somebody just popped on. Nikki, hey, <laughs> nice, nice. So how's everyone's week? It's Saturday, so day two of rest day before the half marathon distance. So rest days are always hard. Always very reflective. I don't really like them very much. But they are what they are. They're important for your body to rest and heal while you uh, come up with your strategy for running tomorrow. What's my pace strategy going to be? Stuff like that. And then just reflect. So it's been kind of nice, right? Kind of nice couple of rest days. Not too bad. It'd be nice if the snow stopped, but you know, whatever. <clears throat> Again, talking about the lens of perception, it's so funny because I talked about that the other day and then uh, was just reminded of it by several things that kept coming at me for the, the following couple of days and maybe that's just where my attention is right now, but um, having that lens of perception change how we view things is so, uh, I mean, it's just the way it is, right? It's not good or bad, it just is the way it is. We color our perception of everything based on our experiences and our, you know, our biases or whatever. It's all makes up the lens by which we look at things through. So the traumas that we go through, things like that, all make up that lens. <clears throat> and we can alter that lens if we want to. You know, if we can recognize that, like I said the other day, when there was snow on the ground, I had to scrape off my car to go to the park and do a trail run. Um, you know, I changed the lens that I looked at that through. Um, what if it were like the first snowfall of the season and not the last one? <laughs> and would that like change how I felt about it? And it absolutely did. You know, it was more of a, I looked at it through the lens of what if it weren't the 500th day of snow and I wanted it to be gone but the first one that really like you kind of get a little excited for the season change and stuff like that um, so changing that lens of perception on things is so powerful and that's where all of our power resides right because that's our choice Meredith Mo oh here's everybody <laughs> oh wow hi guys good morning happy Saturday Mary Jo's here, Meredith Mo. Sorry if I don't see you guys come up on my feed. If you leave a comment, I will be sure to get to them all later. Um, if I don't see them come up. Uh, so, um, yeah, I was talking about that lens of perception and, um, and just how we look at things changing. And, I, and it struck me recently, we had a... a um, a little bit of a, a check-in yesterday. Uh, we do three different check-ins with the um, outreach and engagement specialist team. And yesterday, um, you know, I have a tendency to feel like I don't do enough and be like very self-critical in that way. 
and yesterday, and especially on rest days, right? I'm not doing enough, I'm not training, I'm not doing, like, I'm so self-critical. Um, and it had occurred to me to just um, set a baseline. And if I can get through today and remain sober and in recovery, then everything else is just gravy. If I get anything else done in that day, it's just like above and beyond um, you know, my recovery. And that's what's really important. And if I can sustain that through all of this, <laughs> that's accomplishment enough as far as I'm concerned. And I, and I communicated that to the rest of my recovery family yesterday saying that, you know, because it's starting to, you know, weigh on everybody. And, you know, I think to, to a certain degree, we're all kind of similar in that way of being very driven, very, you know, we want to do our best. We want to help people. We want to do, you know, and if we don't feel like we're measuring up to our own standards, we tend to you know, beat ourselves up. But, you know, man, just take a look at, you know, what we've been through and what we're going through. And if we can retain our our sobriety, you know, we're all still here. We're all still, you know, in recovery and and putting yet another day together, another 24 hours together without drinking or using or, or anything. That's, you know, that's an accomplishment, <laughs> quite frankly. Uh, and it's not, I mean, I don't think that's overstating it. I think that, you know, not everyone is able, unfortunately, to do that right now. This is causing a lot of uh, return to use. Um, you know, we're gonna start seeing a result of that really soon, and it's, and it's sad. Um, but we've got to look at what we're doing for ourselves in our own recovery and celebrate that regularly, if not daily. <laughs> you know, great job, everybody checking in and being here. Um, and it, and it also caused me to be grateful today um, for everything I've been through. And I know I've said this before. I feel like people in recovery are have gone through all of the boot camp for what we're going through right now, uh, some of us to a greater or lesser extent. Um, I've experienced, you know, I've been to jail. Um, I've experienced having everything taken from me, including my freedom. Um, you know, I've had to sell all of my possessions just to be able to pay my rent. Um, and th these didn't all happen at the same time. These things happened throughout my life and going through my life, you know, I'd always just say, what the hell, you know, how, when am I ever going to get ahead? And all of those lessons were teaching me what's truly important. Um, it's not things. And so many of us these days, you know, it's such a cliche, you know, things aren't what's important, but, but can you really truly live that way? <laughs> like, when you're sitting on your living room floor because you've just sold all your furniture, you sold your TV, you sold your bedroom set, you sold, I've done those things. I've done those things in order to survive. And it's times like those that made me really truly realize what's important and it's not things. It's not, you know, and we, we go through day by day and I feel I have a ton of compassion for people who own their own businesses right now and have no control over but we don't have control. That, and that's what the truly important lesson from all of this is, is that nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. You can work your ass off, and if everything gets shut down, it's completely out of your control. Completely out of your control. So what do you do about that, right? What do you, <laughs> you know, you realize that you never have any control. And you don't live in fear of that. I don't live in fear of that. I've realized that for a really long time. You know, I've had, you know, cops in the IRS show up at my house and repossess my vehicles. And there is nothing you can do about that. They are not going to listen to you. They are not going to, they're just going to take your shit and go, <laughs> right? Talk about total powerlessness over anything and everything. And I mean, when I had to go through those times of, you know, things were getting repossessed, I had to sell my, it wasn't because of anything I did. I had a client completely stiff me. I had my work dry up. All of these unfortunate circumstances happened all at the same time. And it just, all of it was out of my control. Um, and I just kind of had to accept that that was what it was. And I'll tell you what, um, I'm grateful for that because in this situation, at this time, you know, I know, every day I know my future's uncertain. 
uh, or all of our futures are uncertain. That's life, right? And, and to truly, I mean, get right down to the nitty gritty of what's important, right? And what am I putting my faith in? Am I putting it in other human beings? Um, because people will let you down, period. It's just the nature of human beings. <laughs> That's, so is that what I'm putting my faith in? Am I putting my faith in my possessions? You know, in my financial security? Am I putting my faith in, what am I putting my faith in? And can it let me down? And, and knowing that and having that, I'm very grateful. I'm so grateful for that. And like everything I've been through in my life now, you know, not now, but has already made perfect sense to me. It's what I had to go through to get to that. Like I didn't, I wasn't there, man. When I think about my life, I think about, you know, I don't know, like times where my, my priorities and my, what I put my value in was so screwed up, so backwards. And um, yeah, so I'm just really grateful not to be there anymore. <laughs> anyway. I don't know, I kind of rambled out long enough. I'm gonna read some comments here because I see I've got a few. Mm, ba, ba, ba. Meredith, <laughs> yeah, well, my crew is here. I love that you guys have all these little side conversations. <laughs> Candace, what? Hey, what's up, Richard? Carolyn, Bob, Boston Bob. <laughs> nice, I like it. He is always our response to those situations and in the everyday knowing we have no control. Absolutely. There's a lot of power in that, right? It's what, that's where all of my power lies in my, my reaction or lack of a reaction, right? Um, I, get to, I get to decide. Uh, Candace, I know I showed up. Weird. <laughs> well, I'm glad you showed up. Good morning. Have some coffee. So what put me in mind to all of this? Well, just like everything recently, but um, I don't know. Just uh, just being really grateful and a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the ugliness that's starting to come out in social media and stuff like that just really, um, really makes me appreciate. I don't blame people. Like I don't, I have a lot of compassion for, for that. And, and I understand it and I hope that, you know, eventually people will learn the lesson that's being taught right now. And that is, you know, we don't have all the control that we fool ourselves into thinking we do every day. Um, you know, there are things that happen that are outside of our control. And that, you know, the best thing we can do is just control ourselves and our reaction to it when it happens. Uh, right, like I brought up for an example, you know, as you're my car gets repossessed you know this would happen you know a few years ago several years ago now but um you know that i was talking with uh the trooper and the and they're like wow yeah you're really calm about this and you know normally people are cussing us out and f-bombing and everything else and i said well that doesn't really do anything i know that's not gonna it's not gonna help and you're kind of just doing your job that you're being told to do but you know understand that this is affecting other people too. So, um, so I'm really fortunate for having at least that insight that I'm in control of how I react to things. And in that, in the end is going to make all the difference in the world. And it's easy to be beautiful in beautiful times. It's easy to, you know, when we're, when we've got a steady paycheck and we've got, you know, our family around us and we've got, you know, the, our creature comforts that we're used to, it's easy to be giving and be beautiful, but can you do the same when you're surrounded by ugliness and you're surrounded by you know, circumstances that are out of your control and you're being constantly reminded of how much you know everything sucks? Can you continue to be beautiful and loving in that time? And that's where the real test lies, because that's where you know the shit hits the fan. And you can, you can view it as an abstract concept. Anybody can view it as an abstract concept. And it's, you know, but when you're in the middle of it and it's actually happening and it becomes real, that's when you're like, wow, that's tough. Anyway, soapbox over. David, good morning. Troy, hey guys. 
Literally walking up. Oh, I'm assuming that means waking up now. Yes. Yeah, I slept in a little bit today too, Mo. Jacqueline! So I'm going to do a little, uh, even though he meant to all of this. Thanks, Meredith. Yeah, right? So we got to be really grateful even for, I mean, it's going to be tough to take right now, but I think a lot of people are learning through this experience. Like, like I had to, in a very individual way, years ago, I think we're having to collectively now accept that powerlessness and accept that. So I think a lot of people for the very first time are going through those lessons and they're hard, they're hard lessons. So I have compassion and understanding for people who are having a hard time accepting that right now. Uh, I can't say that I necessarily, you know, went through it gracefully when I initially went through it in my life, but, um, but I get it. Um, and, and I think that we're going to be better for it. Um, going forward. I think a lot of people's priorities are going to be um, different. I don't want to make a judgment word like better or good or it's just going to be different. Um, and that, I, in my estimation, is a good thing. So people will spend more time. I think our governor just said it yesterday. He was talking about his priorities with his family. Just, yeah. I mean, everyone's going to be doing that evaluation of things. Um, so, actually, I watched a movie last night <laughs> called... Um, just mercy uh and it was just it was heavy it was really heavy and it was about um it was based on a true story uh, about um the alabama death row and the injustice that that went on down there uh in the late 80s uh, and someone being wrongly convicted and put on death row and just the injustice of it all and and again that's what puts me more in mind of you know there are our lack of control um, in this, you know, the system that we live in and we're, you know, we're spoon fed the illusion of control. You're given the illusion that you have control over, you know, over certain things. And then when, when it's quite obvious <laughs> that you don't, it becomes this thing that people are like, well, wait, um, you know, and you, you have a hard time accepting the fact that I don't have any control over this. Um, and the control is an illusion. So, uh, and my son, my youngest son, you know, every Friday night we have pizza movie night. And we get together, he's like, wow, that was really good. He was like, I almost cried like three times. I'm like, dude, I did cry. <laughs> he's like, no, you didn't. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it was, it's, it's hard to watch, you know, that kind of injustice and that, you know, that actually happened and happens still. I mean, it's ridiculous. Don't think that it doesn't, you know, that kind of uh, racism is still uh, alive and well. And that kind of injustice goes on all the time, all the time. And it's unfortunate. Um, you know, it's a reality of this world and this world is broken. And, you know, we each individually do what we can to uh, strive to erase injustice. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I've rambled on. I feel like I've rambled on enough today. Um, it's 10 to 8. I'm going to do a little upper body workout today. No legs. I'm going to continue to let my legs rest so I can run tomorrow. <laughs> Cuomo is a beast. Yeah, I don't want to turn political here, David, but I agree with you. I'm really glad he's the governor of our state. And I know that that's not a popular opinion, but if you don't at least concede that he's got some uh, major leadership skills through this, then I don't even know how to help you, but... Yeah. <laughs> David will talk when we get back to the center. <laughs> um, what did I watch? No, uh, it's called Just Mercy, Mo. It's worth the rental. It's on uh, Amazon right now. I think it's like six bucks or whatever. Uh, it's got Jamie Foxx and I, I don't know what the actor's name is. The dude from Creed. Um, not the band, the movie. <laughs> uh, really, uh, just an awesome movie. It was so good. Worst movie for men, I still believe Jeremy Camp. <laughs> Is there really? Because um, cause I really, really liked I Can Only Imagine. that. Talk about movies that make you cry. That one really uh, made me cry. So um, I'm glad. <laughs> Good to hear, man. I won't watch that one. Uh, although I do like Jeremy Camp's music. I, 
that movie looks like it, just another, they're trying to capitalize on, uh, I can only imagine, because that was so big. Uh, but anyway, uh, I digress. So I'm going to do a little upper body workout today. I probably, <laughs> I think everyone should go do Brian Quinn's class. In fact, um, a couple of people who aren't even on Facebook who talked into uh, a couple of our staff members to, that have I amazingly stayed off from, like resisted the temptation to start a Facebook account. Somehow must have started a ghost account because they're doing Brian Quinn's class this morning, which I couldn't be more excited about. Um, but I will probably stay away from that one today because I know there's going to be a lot of legs. <laughs> there's just no Brian Quinn workout without a bunch of legs. Um, so I'm going to try and keep my legs fresh today. Maybe just do some upper body stuff, but lift because I can't two days in a row without doing anything physical. Just can't do it. Sorry. Um, and then 13.1 tomorrow. Again, I'll post my run keeper, um, profile in the comments later. Uh, just to, uh, anyone that wants to friend me on run keeper download, it's a free app. It's a free thing you can use to track your walking, track your running. A couple of us have like a weekly challenge thing going on to see who can get more miles in. I'm going to lose again this week because I ramped the miles way down so I can have a decent half marathon distance tomorrow. Um, so I'll post that and I'll post, we've been posting in the comments after the video feeds to all of the resources. So recovery resources, um, the class schedule, uh, but all of the virtual AA meetings, uh, Y12SR tomorrow. Uh, is on our schedule. Um, AA, HA, NA, Al Anon, Dharma Recovery, Smart Recovery, you name it, we got all those resources. So I'm going to go back in and uh, post those in the comments too, and then make sure I comment on anything that I missed uh, during the feed here, which is a lot because A, I don't have my glasses on, and B, <laughs> for some reason people come on and say hi, and I don't see it until I go back later and look at the comments. So uh, I try and hit you all up afterwards, but. Um, and then I get off from social media for the rest of the day. Nice break. But make sure you check everybody out today. So it's Saturday. We'll have Brian at, uh, what time is Brian's at 9? Uh, and then he comes back for meditation at 11. Um, usually then we have Kirsten and Chelsea, not on the weekend. So Lisa will probably be on at some point today and Yana at 5.30. So if you need to be on social media, have it be those times and have it be to check everybody out. Uh, and then if you do, again, our uh, outreach and engagement specialists, our uh, recovery peer support uh, is always uh, here for you guys if you need it or if you know anybody else that needs it, anybody that needs to talk to anyone, uh, we have great people um, uh, ready and uh, willing and able to uh, help you with your recovery live, one-on-one, -on -one, over the phone. Uh, I sound like an ad. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys. Thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, I know it's early. It's Saturday morning. It's a little gray, so I'm having a hard time waking up. I'm going to have some more coffee and ease into my workout today. Um, I hope everybody has an awesome day and an awesome weekend. I'll check in with you tomorrow morning at 730 before the run. Um, anybody that wants to join me, 13.1, we're going to do it in honor of the Flower City Half, which should have been tomorrow that a bunch of us were training for, but it'll be in October instead. So you got a whole new chance to do uh, the half marathon class leading up to that in October. Uh, so I will see you guys all tomorrow morning. Thank you for joining me. I love you all. And I will see you later. Inspire hope. Peace.